Hey there, YouTube. Found myself doing a project that required that I bend some aluminum L-channel or angle aluminum. And that is not the easiest thing to do. I didn't find many resources on YouTube that talked about this, so I thought that I would make a video of my own, maybe help you guys out with your projects. Um, so this is the angle aluminum, right? Just a 90 degree. This is 16th inch. Um, so the challenge is, if you want to bend this around the corner, uh, this side that I'm holding, that would bend easy, but the top part won't. And I think to give you an example of what I mean, I'm gonna bring this over to my project and explain it briefly to illustrate the challenge with bending aluminum L-channel. Okay, so here's my project. I'm working on a hot tub. The old wooden cabinet uh, rotted out over time, replacing it with a composite cabinet so that I don't have to worry about maintenance in the future. But this wooden top rail here, which is about a one by one, uh, will remain, and that bothers me. I don't wanna have to worry about maintaining a finish on this or this rotting out in the future. So my solution is to install some L-channel that covers the top and the front side, um, which is easy on the straightaways, right? These straight pieces, no big deal. But once you get to these corners, it gets a little challenging. So ultimately this piece, just to illustrate here, is gonna fit over here. This is a two by two piece of aluminum, so I'm gonna cut it down a little bit just to make it fit better. But um, but this is roughly how it's going to fit. And then I have to figure out how to take that straight overhang and turn it into a bend. Okay, so we're looking down the end of this piece of angle aluminum and we're sort of seeing how it's gonna fit on. Again, easy on the straightaway. Once you get to the curve, you know, if I were to try to force this overhang, right? And just try to manually bend it. This would bend easy. This is just following the curve right here, okay? But this top part here, as I bend it, is going to crimp right along here. It's a beautiful, smooth surface right now, but it wouldn't be if I just jammed it over. So the solution that I'm gonna be working with here is, is called curve cutting, where I'm taking this top element here and at measured intervals, I'm gonna be making cuts along here. And what that's going to do is those, those blade cuts are going to leave a gap, which as I form this around the curve, will start to close up and allow the bend to happen without puckering this surface here. At least that's the idea, that's the hope. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is to calculate the radius of this curve and specifically the outside radius, not the inside radius. And the way that we do that is with a carpenter's square, which we can place on the edge here. Um, and then these seams here between where the wood transitions from straight to curved um, is the place that we're looking to take the measurement. Um, and what we see here is that we have a nine and a half and a nine and a half there. So nine and a half is our radius of the outside curve. Now we go inside to this curve cutting calculator on the web. This is blocklayer.com, a uh, really cool tool here. It gives you a spot here where you can enter all of your stats. So in my case, Again, that curve radius is nine and a half uh, inches. Um, we've got the 90 degree turn. The width of my blade is one eighth of an inch. Um, and the width of the uh, dimension that we're cutting is one and a quarter. Um, so that's where you enter all your stats. And then once you hit calculate, it gives you, let me scroll down here. It gives you 
the location of each of the cuts that you need to make in this kerf cut in order to have these tips come together and create the proper bend on this dimension here to match the radius that you're looking to create. Really cool tool, um, really fun to play with too. Back outside now, I've got my printed results from the curve calculator. And I have here also my material that I'm working with, my angle aluminum. And what I've done is I've transferred those measurements to the piece. And I even made a cut here for you so you could see how this is gonna go. And you can see we're leaving a little bit of material on the bottom, we're not cutting it all the way through. To the saw. Okay, moment of truth. I have this clamped down at the other end to assist me with filming here. Uh, this mark right here is the zero mark on my template, and I've lined that up perfectly with the seam between this corner piece and this straight piece. So now we'll do the bend. Okay, that's pretty good. Most of these tips are just about touching. I feel good about that. So now what do we do about these gaps? I'm gonna take this video a step further. If it needs to be aesthetically pleasing, there's something we can do. Okay, so I've moved into the garage and what I have here is just a scrap piece of plywood up on sawhorses and I've checked it for square. And then I've knocked off the corner here to recreate the same curve on the hot tub. And we're going to use these pieces that I've secured to it to mount uh, the L channel and hold it into position while we take care of the top part, which I'll show you next. So here it is with the L channel clamped to the piece of plywood. Again, matching that same curve from the hot tub. And here are the gaps that we're trying to cover. And so here's the fix. This is a piece of 16th inch aluminum sheet metal that I cut to match the curve. We're gonna use this as a cap. And the way that it's going to be attached is through a process called brazing, uh, aluminum brazing. I don't wanna make this video about brazing. There's some great videos already out there. You can check it out, but I'll show you the finished product once this part is done. Now here's that piece attached. Still really rough, so time to clean it up with an angle grinder. Cleaned up nice. After grinding, that's what it looks like. Still a little rough. So now we move on to the sander. Okay, now after a little sanding, that's our finished edge. Just a little rounded off profile. Pretty happy with that. One more step. My last step was to apply a finish to the corner. Uh, this is a, going on a hot tub, which chlorine and aluminum don't work well together, so I want to give it some sort of protective coating. Uh, so I went with this Rust-Oleum Universal uh, Paint and Primer, uh, and it came out pretty good. Once you add the finish, it kind of hides some of the imperfections. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it works for my needs. And I hope this video helped you out with your project.